What up, y'all? It's your man, Abu American. I'm back. Oh, you know your boy's got to put it down. Come on. I'm going to try to stay calm on this video. I'm trying not to get so passionate and energetic. But uh, no guarantees, no promises. So, let's go straight into it. First and foremost, no, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not a pedophile prophet. And I'm going to prove this unequivocally with what I'm about to read. Now, what I'm about to read is going to pop up on your screen here, and you can follow through. So, you know I'm not making this stuff up. All right. Now, this data, this information was sent to me by a friend and viewer of my channel, Jazakallah Khair. And uh, I already kind of knew it passively because I mentioned it in, prior, in my prior video, but I didn't have the actual research and the actual facts in front of me. So now I do. Let's put this down for guys like Black, Black Pigeon Speaks, who says the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a pedophile prophet and this, that, the other. And let's just go and show that just because you speak well doesn't mean you are intelligent. It just means you speak well and uh, you're good at selling turds as chocolate cake. And it also shows that a lot of people enjoy eating turds instead of chocolate cake. They actually enjoy it. But like I said, we're in the times of idiocracy. So this is probably going to be wasted on the less intelligent. But for those of you here who are intelligent, this is going to lay to rest the concept and the idea that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was uh, some sort of pedophile. So here we go. Richard II, who died on the 14th of February 1400, was the king of England between 1377 and 1399. He took Isabella of Valois as his second wife at the age of six years old. They were married on the 31st of October 1396. Now, 1396 is important because we're going to stick to AD. We're not going to go into the, you know, we're going to use the Gregorian calendar and not the Hebrew calendar. 1396 A.D. was when he married the six-year-old. He's a European king. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, died 632 A.D. I'll let that sink in. You're calling the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, a pedophile. And you're not saying the same about King Richard II who was married 1396 A.D., a whopping 764 years later, he was marrying a girl who was six years old, the same age that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, married Aisha. Ready, Allahu Anna. Think about that. 700 years closer to our time. Yet and still, we don't hear or read anything about the pedophilic princes of the United Kingdom. Do we? Yet and still you people want to attack Muhammad, peace be upon him, for being a man of his era and a man of his time. A time when, you know, drinking water was like playing Russian roulette with two bullets. Anyway, let's continue. In medieval times, royal brides were often quite young when they married. Consummation was usually forbidden until a more appropriate age was reached. Now, when we look at the history of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he married Aisha radiallahu anha at six years old and consummated at nine, which would be considered at that time a more appropriate age. Why? Because she went through her first menses. She went into estrus, which in those times made her a full woman. Now, we have proof here that this is also a European practice of those times. Actually, 700, nearly closer to a thousand years later in Europe. I'll just let that sink in. Continuing, Lady Margaret Beaufort was first married when she was just 12 years old. Another marriage happened when she was just one years old. But she never recognized this marriage uh, to John de la Pole, and it was dissolved before she was four years old. At the age of 12, Margaret was married to 24-year-old Edmund Tudor. The marriage was certainly consummated as Margaret was seven months pregnant when Edmund died of the plague. Now, this is less spectacular because we showed yes, uh, in my last video that uh, you can marry a 12-year-old in the United States in 2016. So this is probably less spectacular because a lot, a lot 
in a lot of countries in 2016 will allow you to marry a 12 year old. And if you didn't see that video, go back and view it. Are Muslims pedophiles? But we, we, we shall continue. Fathers who possessed rank and wealth affianced their children at a very early age and compelled, compelled them to marry on arriving at puberty. Thomas, Lord Berkeley, was contracted to Margaret, daughter of Gerald Warren, uh, Lord Lizzle, in the 41st year of Edward III. So he was 41 years old when he married this seven-year-old, and it was arranged that she should remain with her father for four years. So he was 41, and he married a seven years old. Uh, important Harrises were often married between the ages of five and ten years old. Now, if you know anything about the history uh, of uh, the Muslims, Aisha radiallahu anha came from an influential tribe. And um, you could say she was an heiress of her age, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was married to her at six years old. And as we can see, 700 years after his death, this practice of marrying girls between 5 and 10 years old was quite common. Let's continue. Traditionally across the globe, the globe they say here, the age of consent for sexual union was a matter for family to decide or tribal custom. And I will say here that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was an Arab who came from a tribal people. Continuing, in most cases, this co coincided with signs of puberty, menstruation for a woman, and pubic hair for a man. Sir Edward Coke in the 17th century England made it clear that the marriage for, of girls under 12 was normal. And the age at which a girl who was a wife was eligible for dower from her husband's estate at the age of nine. Holy smokes, he said this in the 17th century. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came way before the 17th century. And he married Aisha when she was six and consummated when she was nine. And what did Edmund Coke say in the 17th century? She was eligible to dower from her husband's estate at the age of nine. Yeah. You know... No, 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 no. Before I go in, let, let's just continue. This is going to be a little a long one, but it's the last part, and then I'm just going to go in Abu American style. The above is to illustrate the differences between A, what was considered acceptable in many cultures and civilizations of marriage by consent with full involvement of the parents or legal guardians, and all that marriage entailed of maintaining purity, chastity, and mutual rights and duties between two consenting adults. Adulthood is the onset of major signs of puberty or full mental maturity was reached, sometimes well before pu puberty itself. And the concept of adolescence, which only emerged in the early 20th century as a social construct, did not even exist, and the modern interest in pedophilia. The latter is a result of 20th century materialist existentialist philosophies, such as those of the child sexual predator Jean-Paul Sartre and the child sex research of depraved degenerates such as Alfred Kinsey. Combined with others, their ideas of sexual freedom gave birth to sexual revolution and to predatory sexual interests in children. This led to a pedophile subculture in places like France, Britain at the same time. And he says here in 1970s and 1980s, when certain well-known figures were active in politics and entertainment, in short, King Richard II and by default Mohammed, peace be upon him, were no Jimmy Seville, Glary Getter, or Cyril Smith. Mm, I'm just going to give you that look for a second here. Just looking at the facts, gentlemen. Looking at the facts. Jean Paul Sartre and Alfred Kinsey. Oh, very Muslim names. Mm. Very Muslim names. I don't get it, man. What is it? Do you enjoy making people stupid? Do you enjoy the lies and the distortions? I, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm trying to figure it out. Sometimes I look at it and I'm just like, 
people know better but don't do better and I wonder why. Because if I know better, I try to do better. I really do. And I'm not bigging myself up. I'm not trying to make myself seem like some great and excellent dude, you know. I mean, I've got my share of mistakes and screw-ups and, you know, consistent bad habits. But, you know, to go out and just actually teach people foolishness and lies, distortions. I don't get it. Then, then when you do this, you talk about the moral decline of the West. That's the kicker part right there. You speak of the moral decline of the le uh, 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 of the West, and Black Patreon speaks. This goes to you in specific, and this decline in morality is aided by people like you who are complaining about it. Because there's no morality in spreading lies about people who are dead and can't defend themselves. Who are dead and history defends them. History defends them. You make lies a socially acceptable thing. You are a liar and you spread lies as if it's fact. And then have the unmitigated gall and audacity to talk about moral decline. Is not lying to nearly 50 plus thousand followers you have. Is it that many or more? I can't remember. Is that not morally corrupt and bankrupt? How do you have any position or place speaking about moral decline and decay, yet and still you tell bold-faced lies to tens of thousands of people? Your platform isn't even yours. It's mine. Your platform belongs to the Muslims because that's what you built it on our back your viewership and your followers they aren't yours they're ours because without us without you trying to constantly throw Muslims under the bus with your lies and distortions you wouldn't have that viewership you know I'm right I love being right. This is your man, Abu American. Catch me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Abu American. I'm out.